From the following information, we have to prepare a cash flow statement according to direct method and indirect method as per Accounting Standard 3 revised. Working notes should form part of your answer. So we have a balance sheet as on 31-12-2013. We also have information relating to 2012 and that is more important for preparing cash flow statement because only if you have two years balance sheet, you will be able to find what is the movement in the assets and liabilities. So assets, cash on hand, 2012 it is 25, in 30 it is 200, so there is an increase by 175. So that increase is what we are going to analyze. Then short term investment from 135 it moved to 670. Sundry data has moved from 1200 to 1700. There is an increase, so it's an outflow. Interest receivable, nothing in 12, so in 13 it is 100. Inventories from 1950 it has come down to 900, so there is an inflow. Long term investments, no movement both the years 2500. Fixed as a at cost in 12 it is 1910 whereas in 13 it is 2180 so there is an increase less accumulated depreciation there is some movement from 1060 to 1450 so you have net value it has come down to 730 from 850 so the total assets in 2012 is 660 whereas in 2013 it is 6800 then moving to liabilities in 2012, Sundry Kretas is 1890. In 13, it is 150. So there is a sizable payment. Interest payable 2100. In 13, it is 230. So a portion of interest have not been paid. Income tax payable from 1000, it has come down to 400. Long term debt from 1040, it has moved to 1110. So the total liability has come down from 4030 to 1890. Whereas shareholder funds, share capital 2012 is 1250, whereas 13 it is 1500. The reserves in 2012 is 1380, whereas in 13 is 410. So the reserves balance have come down. I'm sorry, it's a technical mistake. Reserves balance have not come down in 2012, it is 1380, whereas in 13 it is 3410. So there is a manifold increase. Then total shareholders funds in 2012 is 2630, whereas in 13 it is 4950. So there is an increase because of share capital as well as because of reserves. So the total liabilities in 12 is 660, whereas in 13 it is 6800. Then moving to statement of profit and loss for the period ended 31st December 2013. Sales is 30,650, cost of sales is 26,000. Gross profit is 46.50, depreciation is 450, admin and selling expenses 910, interest expenses are 400, interest income is 300, dividend income is 200, foreign exchange loss is 40. So the net profit before taxation and extraordinary item is 33.50, and the extraordinary item is insurance proceeds from earthquake disaster settlement, which is 180. So the net profit after extraordinary item is 3530. Income tax is 300. The net profit is 3230. Additional information. An amount of 250 was raised from the issue of share capital and a further 250 was raised from long term borrowings. Interest expense was 400 of which 170 was paid during the period. 100 relating to interest expense of the prior period was also paid during the period. Dividends paid were 1200. Tax deducted at source on dividends received included in the tax expense of 300 for the year amounted to 40. During the period the enterprise acquired fixed assets for 350. The payment was made in cash. Plant with original cost of 80 and accumulated depreciation of 60 was sold for 20. Foreign exchange loss of 40 represents the reduction in carrying amount of short term investment in foreign currency designated bonds arising out of a change in exchange rate between the date of acquisition of the investment and balance sheet date. Sundry debtors and sundry creditors includes amount relating to credit sales and credit purchases only. So with this information, we have to prepare the cash flow statement in both the direct method as well as indirect method. So first, 
for preparing the cash flow statement under direct method we need certain information what are the information we require number 1 we should know what is the cash that is received from the customers so how we are going to find what is the cash received from customer it is very simple you have opening data's balance you have closing data's balance so with sales you make adjustment for this opening and closing data that is opening data plus sales minus closing data is going to give what is the cash collected from customers we'll do that cash receipt from customers we have sales information which is 3650 with this let us add opening sundry data at the beginning of the year which is 1200 and let us deduct the closing sundry data at the end of year which is 1700 so we have cash receipt from customers The next information what we require is what is the cash that has been paid to the suppliers and employees. We have information about we have information about the cost of sales in the question which is twenty six thousand and we also information we also have information about admin and selling expenses which is nine hundred and ten. So this is the expense that has been accounted for the year which is twenty six thousand nine hundred and ten. but when we are talking about cash paid to suppliers we should know what has been purchased the information what we have in cost of sales is consumption so if you want to know what has been purchased you should add back closing stock and deduct the opening stock so that should be done as far as the inventory is concerned but if you are interested in knowing what is the payment you should add opening sundry creditors and deduct closing sundry creditors so you will get to know payment for knowing payment you should know purchases for knowing purchases you should add the closing inventory and deduct opening inventory and for knowing payment you should add opening sundry creditors and deduct closing sundry creditors so we will do that we are going to add opening sundry creditors that is sundry creditors at the beginning of the year which is 1890 and we are adding inventories at the end of the year which is 900 so we are taking the total 2790 and we have to deduct sundry creditors at the end of the year which is 150 and inventories at the beginning of the year which is 1950 so 2100 so now we get to know what is the cash that has been paid to suppliers and employees which is 27600 our next working note is for finding what is the income tax that has been paid including the tax deducted at source on dividend we have information on income tax expense for the year including the tax deducted which is 300 we know what is the income tax liability in the beginning of the year this information we can take from balance sheet which is 1000 and the income tax liability at the end of the year is 400 so the net income tax that has been paid during the year is 900 now this can be divided into two because out of 900 40 is paid by the way of tds on dividend so it can be classified under investment activity and remaining 860 relates to profit so this has to be shown under operating activity the next working note is for finding what is the long term loans that have been repaid yes in balance sheet we noticed the long term loan position has come down but there was some additional information with regard to the funds that have been mobilized so the long term debt at the beginning of the year is 1040 and there was additional information that long term borrowings made during the year is 250 so 1290 was the total long term funds whereas the position at the end of the year is 1110 it means there is a repayment to the extent of 180 our next working is for computing what is the interest paid we had information on interest expense for the year in the question which is 400 we also had information on the opening interest payable and closing interest payable so let's add the opening interest payable which was 100 so it is 500 and we'll do the closing interest payable which is 230 it means the interest that has been paid is only 270 so now let us prepare the cash flow statement under direct method we should start with cash flow from operating activity we should know what are the cash flows that had come in cash receipts from customers we have calculated in working note 1 which is 30150 
then we should know what are the cash outflows cash paid to suppliers and employees working note 2 we computed which is 27 600 then the difference between these two would give what is the cash generated from operations from this we have to pay the income tax and we have computed in working note 3 which is 860 so this is going to give us cash flow before extraordinary item which is 1690 with this we have to make adjustment for extraordinary items which is proceeds from earthquake disaster settlement which is 180 and now this is giving us the net cash from operating activities which is 1870 then we move on to cash flow from investing activity there are some purchase of fixed assets right yeah the purchase of fixed assets is 350 this is available in additional information then there are some proceeds from sale of equipment which is 20 then interest received is 200 dividend received is 160 so this is going to give us the net cash from investing activities which is only 30 then let's move on to cash flows from financing activity share capital has increased so there are proceeds from issuance of share capital which is 250 then some long-term borrowings were also raised that is 250 and there was also some repayment which we have calculated which is 180 and interest is also paid there which is 270 dividend paid is 1200 so the net cash used in financing activity it's an outflow so it's a usage which is 1150 so the net increase in cash and cash equivalents summing the cash generated or cash used in all the three activities we get it is 750 so the cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the period is 160 the cash generated during the year is 750 so cash and cash equivalent at the end of the period is 910 here in this cash and cash equivalent we have also considered the short term investment so because of considering the short term investment there is some effect in the current year because if you consider the cash and cash cash and cash equivalent including the short term investment you may not get 910 there would be a gap of 40 let's see what it is the cash and hand and balances with banks in 2012 is 25 whereas in 2013 it is 200 so the movement is only 175 but we are talking about the range of 910 that's because of short term investments in 12 it is 135 in 13 it is 670 now this is going to cause the problem because we are going to take the total of cash and cash equivalent in 12 it is 160 in 13 it is 870 now why this is 870 the short term investments is valued at 670 because of providing mark to market foreign exchange difference of 40 so actually the balance of short term investment is up or higher by 40 which was reduced due to mark to market so now that is being added effects of exchange rates of 40 that is being added so now we will get the real cash and cash equivalent for 2013 which is 910 and not 870 that is because of the 40 which is effect of exchange rate changes so in 2013 it is 910 whereas in 2012 it is 160 so we have answered question one wherein we have prepared the cash flow statement under direct method now let us move on to indirect method here also we will start with cash flow from operating activity the first one would be net profit before tax and extraordinary item which is double three five zero we have to do certain adjustment number one is depreciation which is 450 because of being a non-cash item then we have to add back foreign exchange loss of 40 this effect is considered in finally the cash and cash equivalents then we have to deduct the interest income earned of 300 because this has to be shown under investment activity similarly the dividend income should also be deducted for capturing under investment activity then interest expense paid by the company should be added back for capturing under financing activity for capturing it under financing activity so now we get operating profit before working capital changes let us capture the movement in working capital 
Number one, there is an increase in sundry data, so that should be captured as an outflow which is 500. Then there is a decrease in inventory that should be captured as inflow which is 1050. Then there is a decrease in sundry creditors, it's an outflow, so it is captured as an outflow which is 1740. So this is giving us cash generated from operations which is 2550. Now from this we have to detect what is the income tax paid and we have calculated which is 860 because of which 40 is adjusted by way of TDS. So the cash flow before extraordinary item is 1690. Now we have to make provision for or we have to disclose the cash flows associated with the extraordinary item which is proceeds from earthquake disaster settlement which is 180 and here we have net cash from operating activities which is 1870. Now let's move on to cash flow from investing activities. Number one is purchase of fixed assets. There is a cash outflow to the extent of 350 on purchase of fixed assets. Then there are some proceeds out of sale of equipment which is 20. Then we have information on interest received. This is the interest received which we have detected under operating activity so, so that is added here. Then the dividend received which was detected under operating activity is added here which is 160. So in this way we have net cash from investing activities which is 30. Then moving on to cash flows from financing activity. There are some proceeds from issue of share capital which is 250 then some proceeds from long term borrowings which is 250 there are some repayments of long term borrowings which is 180 and interest paid on long term borrowing is 270 this is what we have added back under operating activity and dividends paid is 1200 so we have net cash used in financing activity which is 1150 so in this way we can find the net increase in cash and cash equivalent by summing all the three activities which is 750. With this let us add the opening cash and cash equivalent. This comprise cash balance as well as short term instruments which is 160. So we will have closing cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period which is 910. How this 910 comprises now? This 910 comprises closing cash balance then closing balance of short term investments and of course the forex gap of 40. Thank you for watching this video hope you liked it. If you wish to learn more on this topic do check our comprehensive online course I have given the link in the description below. If you like this video lecture do not forget to click on that like share and subscribe button with bell icon.